G'day, I'm Jib Smart, and here are some cool things to try with the new Joyshock Mapper 2. Check out the change log and the README for more details on how these new options work. The biggest highlight in my opinion is a collection of binding modifiers. Nicholas has implemented all these different modifiers for more advanced mappings, so you can turn toggles into holds, holds into toggles, map one input to multiple outputs, or even load new configs at the press of a button. Let's start simple with a toggle modifier. Here, it means pressing the button once begins a long press of the right mouse button. Pressing the same button again releases the right mouse button. So if a game requires you to hold a button to stay crouching, sprinting, aiming down sights or anything else, but you'd much prefer to press the button once and stay in that state and then press it again to exit that state, this modifies for you. Here in a contrived example, I'm toggling fire as flying instead of holding it. Now the reverse of the toggle modifier is turning one press into two taps one as soon as you begin pressing the button, and another as soon as you release it. This will turn toggles into holds, but here I'm doing something a little bit different with it. I've made the right trigger a dedicated double click button. This will tap the left mouse button when I first start pressing the right trigger, disable the gyro while I hold it, and then tap the left mouse button again when I release the right trigger. This means the mouse stays still even if you have shaky hands, and a short press will give you a nice and reliable double click, which in this game selects all on-screen units of the same type. While I'm playing Age of Empires 2, let's look at one-to-many mappings. With this configuration, I can press and hold a direction on the D-pad to save the current selection of units as a control group, and tap the same button to select those units again. As you can see if you look closely, I've indicated with the apostrophe that with a short tap of this button, the one key will be pressed. And with the underscore, I indicate that with a long hold of this button, both control and one should be pressed. Like in many real-time strategy games, control and a number sets a control group, while the number on its own selects the control group. On a controller, it's really handy to be able to do both with just one button. Alright, let's get on to something more advanced. You can now load new configs at the press of a button. For example, by loading a different config every time I press R2 plus triangle, I can toggle back and forth between the shotguns in Doom Eternal. If you saw my Doom Eternal video, you know I've wanted to do this for a while. When R2 is held, each face button corresponds to a different weapon category, and pressing the same button repeatedly lets me toggle back and forth between the weapons in the category. See how I can press triangle over and over to move back and forth between the shotguns, circle for the bullet weapons. Of course, if the developers of the game implemented this themselves, it could fit seamlessly on top of the current weapon wheel and quick swap system. So if you'd like to play this way on console versions of the game, kindly let the developers know. Being able to change configs at the press of a button is also useful for setting completely different controls when in menus or driving vehicles in other games. Now, apart from more advanced button bindings, we have some other cool changes too. If you're sick of calibrating the gyro at the start of each play session, check out the on startup file. This file is loaded automatically right after starting Joyshock Mapper. I use it to start calibrating the gyro right away, wait one second, then finish calibrating, all before I've picked up the controller. You could also use this to whitelist and reconnect your controls if you're using Hit Guardian, or to disable autoload while you're experimenting with other configs. Now, I've implemented a sense of fusion solution that opens the door for all sorts of motion controls beyond gyro aiming. For now, we have lean bindings and motion stick. Lean bindings let you treat leaning the controller left or right as a button input. Here I've bound lean left to Q and lean right to E so I can lean side to side in crisis. Using these at the same time as gyro aiming is pretty clunky, but this feature has been requested a lot, so there you go. Recall from my Enter the Gungeon video that their gyro aim turns the whole controller into a virtual thumbstick, but it's super shaky because it doesn't actually use the gyro at all. But Joystick Mapper's motion stick option shows what it could have been, turning the whole controller into a virtual stick that can aim in the direction you're tilting the controller, without any of that shakiness, but also without any smoothing, so it's super responsive. As I hypothesized in my Enter the Gungeon video, Sensor Fusion makes for a far better virtual thumbstick than using the accelerometer alone like they're doing. And because I'm using a single Joy-Con turned to the side, I'm using the new Controller Orientation option to make the sticks work correctly. This option applies to both thumbsticks as well as Motion Stick. Motion Stick can do anything a regular thumbstick can do in Joystick Mapper, including Flick Stick, Traditional Stick Aiming, Moving the Player, and more. Back to proper gyro aiming, the gyro trackball binding is a new way to quickly reposition your controller while still staying in the action. Think of it as an advanced version of a gyro off button, but instead of just disabling the gyro so you can reposition your controller, it maintains the last gyro velocity you had before pressing the button. This means you can keep the camera turning while you reposition your controller. But it does take some practice. If you want to force yourself to get used to it quickly, try disabling the right stick altogether so that you're 100% relying on the gyro trackball. 
Then when you feel you've gotten comfortable with it, enable the right stick again to take full advantage of all the options available to you on your controller. There's a lot more going on in this huge update, so check out the changelog for a list of all the new features and to see who worked on what. Find more detailed descriptions of how each new feature works in the readme. Big thanks to these kind people supporting me on Patreon. This money helps me with the cost of hosting GyroWiki, getting games and hardware for videos, and taking time off from paid work to work on all these projects. Thanks for your generous support. I really appreciate it and I'm super encouraged that this is what you've chosen to do with some of your hard earned cash. If you want to check out the latest version of George Rock Mapper, I have a link to it in the description below. Get in the comments or the Gyro Gaming Discord and show me what you can do with it, tell me what you wish you could do with it, and let's change how games are played.